Hi, Brad Buckner here, SharpensBest.com. We're going to check out some knives that we bought, uh, you know, Karambit. Uh, K-A-R-A-M-B-I-T, Karambit. Uh, we get uh, questions all the time about uh, curved blades, uh, hawkbill blades, in other words, an inside radius. So let's take a look and see here. And uh, we dump this one out of there, put the box back together because it's going to blow away. We've got a little wind today. Dump it out of the bag. Put the bag in the hole here, okay? We open it up, we actually see that it is a very good inside radius blade. I call them a hawk bill. They're uh, in Middle East and stuff, probably karambit. And uh, it has a really good handle on it, you know, you can put your finger in there. There's a whole lot of stuff that you do with this knife in particular ways. I do not know those ways. So I sharpen knives and I show you how to sharpen knives, these blades. Here's what I find out at the shows. Anybody with a hawk bill inside radius uh, thinks it's a real pain in the butt to sharpen, and I know it is because a flat stone does not work well on it at all. Let's call this a, a, a whetstone. What would you do with that? You can't, unless you take the corner and you just go along like this, or you tip it up like this, that would be very, very difficult. So what I like to use, I like to use my products, all right? The Sharpen Spark Mini, uh, by the way, has sharp and spark. It's got a bottle opener in the handle, it's got a reshaper, a sharpener, and then tucked up in the handle, as both of our sharpened sparks do, you actually have fire starter. That is not magnesium. I have called it that a few times. You wouldn't believe what comes out of my mouth at times. Okay, it's actually ferrocerian rods, combination of six rare earth metals. Burns about 3,000 degrees. It's actually about 5 sixteenths in diameter, lasts a long time. So let's screw it right back together here. And by the way, you can get these by getting a hold of Brad Buckner. Call me, go to sharpensbest.com. They are an extremely good little sharpener, good little survival tool, four tools in one. So let's get to sharpening the knife. On this one, I'm gonna set, just like always, I put the sharpener on the blade, match the bevel, just like that. Then I'm gonna turn it a little bit, and I'm gonna turn the knife a little bit, up like this, and now I'm just going to slide it like this. I don't even notice there. Oh, wait a minute. What did I do? I never forget to see how sharp the knife is, but I sure forgot this time. All right, let's go back and check and see. That's not too bad if I slow down. Kind of help. Oop, tore the paper. It's not overly sharp by any means. You have to kind of coax it along. So now we're going to sharpen it. See. So we take it like this. We'll slide the knife along, this, or excuse me, the sharpener along like this. I see the blade shining more and more and more like that. If it shines too much on the cutting edge, you need to tip the sharpener down. If it shines too much on the heel, then you need to tip it up a tiny bit. When you see the knife shine parallel all the way across, you know you got the bevel match perfectly. Now right in from the end, okay, you're going to notice that from the center to a line across from the point to the hilt back here, there'd probably be about a quarter of an inch. This is going to slide all the way across that quarter of an inch like this. So in other words, I don't notice it even happening. Now if that was a round object, you got to poke at it, poke at it, poke at it. If it's flat, good luck with that. Because the genius of my sharpener is actually an outside corner, 90 degree corner, I can get into things that almost nobody else can. So an inside radius, it just follows the radius just like that slide it right along set it down slide it pick it up move it set it down slide it pick it up move it you can work on just the tip or you set it down and work on the tip with a little more pressure just like that only knives that are kind of dull do I actually add some pressure to so just like this and we flip it over and I'm going to speed it up and get to work here now this would be real time about 90 touches a minute so if the blade was flat the bevel is up you match the bevel like this Turn it approximately 45, yeah, 38 to 45, 46 degrees, and brush along like that. Again, you can set it down like this. Oop, I got an itch. <laughs> and just like that, and go right on out and drop it off the tip. Move along pretty fast. The blade shines all the way across, so I know I got the bevel match. Just like that. Now, we're going to take it and touch it back and forth, polish the blade a little bit. I quit in about one minute's time. That might have been a little bit more but the actual time of sharpening is probably about a minute. So, let's see what one minute did for that knife, or approximately. That is, uh, that's five times sharper than it was. That's crazy sharp right now. 
We are going to see if we can make it a little bit sharper, but you can see I, I just slide the knife through the paper like that. That's sharp. Oop, we'll have to pick that one up. So we're going to spend a little bit more time and I'm just going to touch it softer and softer. Notice how everything kind of balances. <coughs> I don't put a lot of pressure. I never put my finger up here like this. There's a little bit of a round right there. There's also a uh, sharp and spark, a little bit of a, of a logo right there. My fingers, my finger and thumb, I capture it with my middle finger back here so I can actually twizzle it forwards and backwards like this. So I'll actually have it pointed this way and then I'll turn it with my middle finger towards the tip, slide it out that way. Now we're going to turn it over and do the same thing, only this time I'm just going to let it run out and drop right off the tip. Now we're going to touch it back and forth. It's very, very important to when you're polishing the blade that you flip the blade every pass. 20 passes, 10 on each side. Right now we're just polishing. I want absolutely no wire edge, no microscopic burr, no wire edge, nothing left on that blade. And let's see what it looks like now. And that is plenty sharp. We have a nice crisp edge. The paper's not torn. It took no effort to slide it through there, just like that. That's sharp enough. If you make a knife too much like a razor blade, ooh, that is sharp. What's going to happen is you're going to have it so thin. Sharp means thin. Thin means sharp. Thin is not tough. You want a pocket knife that's pretty tough, a little bit sharp. Don't make it too much like a razor blade. Why? You're going to roll the edge or nick it. If you got a pocket knife with two or three blades, choose one of those blades. Make it sharp like a razor blade. Don't cut anything else with it. Keep one of them actually pretty, like 22 degrees. My real cutting knives are down around 11 degrees. And then just choose what you're going to sharpen on that knife and what you're going to cut with it. This is Brad sharpening an inside radius on a karambit style knife and it didn't take about two minutes to really make this brand new knife sharp. We just got finished uh, sharpening a uh, regular blade karambit, All right, not serrated, now we're going to sharpen one that is. And shake it out of here, put the lid back on the box, get it out of the plastic, Ooh, it's kind of a nice looking knife. Put the plastic down there. We're going to open it up and now we have a serrated edge blade. So half of it is serrated, the regular part is out here and again, and it's pretty cool, it's actually got a uh, carabiner type handle on it. All right, and so let's uh, just get right into, I've already shown you how to sharpen uh, the regular blade and let's see for new, oh, it isn't too bad but you got to coax it a little bit. All right, and I don't think uh, these are like really deep and sharp. I don't know if they'll cut paper no matter what. Uh, th that's just a little too bumpy. So let's get right into sharpening. How would I sharpen the serrated edge blades, okay? That corner right there, 90 degrees, or that corner right there, 90 degrees, is what I'm gonna put right down in the blade. And I'm gonna tip it over so you can see maybe, see how it actually follows the contour of the, of the uh, grind perfectly. Then I will do the little ones, and then I'll do the round one. This is the only tool you'll find that actually goes down in, goes through the round hole, and works perfectly. So in other words, what I call following the contour of the blade. These are really awkward to sharpen, so we're going to take, make a pivot out of my thumbs, and do just like this. Set it down left, slide it right, set it down left, slide it right, set it down left, slide it right. In real time, it would look like this. Again, we look for the shine on the blade. If it shines all the way across that little area surface right there, that means we matched it. And I'm going to hold real still because this is perfect. You can actually see the shine back here, the shine on the front, no shine on the second one because I haven't touched it yet. So that's a perfect example. All right, so we make a pivot out of my thumbs, set it down left, slide it right, set it down left, slide it right. Then we go through the little points. I am going to tip it up and see if we can get a better look at it this way, like that and then the little points, then the rounded hole, the, the grind on the rounded hole, then the little points, and by the way, look at this. My tool will actually go right down in there to the very bottom of those little tiny points. So in other words, I'm not actually leaving any part of that unsharpened. We just run along like this, we come down here now, and I'm gonna kinda kick it up into real time, just like that, then we do the little points, do all three of the little points and we do the rounded hole and then we're going to do this we brush along real light I'm talking maybe an eighth of an ounce of pressure flip it over flatten it out this way brush on the back take any little burrs and stuff off of the back like that 
just like this and then the regular part of the blade would be just like that and turn it over now we'll keep turning it over here about five six seven passes and turn it over turn it over now we're going to turn it back and forth each pass polish the little wire edge off the blade and let's see in that short time if I actually change that part of the blade that is better than it was I don't have to toy with it so much to cut the paper off and like I say these are just two sharp uh, holes I don't think that will ever cut paper like some of my oop, my gosh look at that it actually is I'm actually kind of amazed this is Brad sharpensbest.com take care have a great day